PopCultureZone.com is an online shop focusing on hot new comics, including exclusive and incentive variants, CGC graded comics, and tons of other inventory, including pop culture toys and other collectibles, all at low and competitive prices. PopCultureZone.com ships all over the U.S. And if you are buying raw comics, they offer flat rate shipping of only $4.99. That's right, $4.99. Absolute craziness, right? And there's no taxes included, excluding New Jersey. PopCultureZone is also on eBay, where they hold a 100% positive feedback rating with over 8,000 completed transactions for this year alone. Make sure to check out the link to their website below as well as their eBay link. So be sure to give them a follow there as well. I did a video some time back discussing how we look at the, the market value of graded comics. So as you know, all of us here know, and many of you know in the chat, you know, once you once you get a book and you know, put it in a slab and it gets assigned this sticker. You know, it, it solidifies a grade, at least to the to the perception of the market. And we know that, you know, when you when you look at a book that is graded in a 9.8, it's already getting sometimes twice, sometimes three, four, five times that of the grade just lower in a 9.6, right? But that book raw, that 9.8 book raw is going to go for a substantial amount less than in that graded slab. So we know what, what grading these books can do to the value on the market. Andrew, uh, I'll, I'll start with you here. I think, obviously, when we look at value on a market of, of any mm -hmm. product or certain whatever, supply and demand, it's very basic. Yep. And when supply uh falls short of demand and demand is surpassing supply that's what drives the price up because people are willing to pay for it more when it's scarce on the market or if something's rare on the market mm -hmm. so there's a perception about the the de demand versus supply of graded books on the market and this mm -hmm. is based on something called the census so mm -hmm. for those that don't know cgc does keep a census of how many books in that certain grade are out there, right? So for example, we're gonna use Ultimate Fallout 4 as an example. This book in a 9.8 is right about at that 3,000 mark the last time I looked. I think it was like maybe like not even 100 short of that 3,000 mark. Mm -hmm. So let's give an example of certain individuals that may say, it's a modern book. There's no way that book should be worth this much in a 9.8 there's so many of them out there well keep in mind folks there was about 71,000 in the print run of uf4 and there's only about 3,000 in a 9.8 but what i brought up when i talked about this recently was well how many potential 9.8s though are still sitting there and just not sent to cgc or cbcs yet and what is that? If, if that happens, if that comes to fruition, what can that do to the value of the grade? So, so Drew, starting off with you, my question mm -hmm. around this topic is, are we putting too much value into graded comics, basing supply and demand simply on what's graded right now and not looking at the possibility of what can be graded tomorrow? I think on modern, especially, yeah, there's definitely a factor of that because I mean, how many times do you see flex picks on IG or Facebook or whatever where somebody's just, you know, they've got 30 Ultimate Fallout 4s yeah. or Edge of Spider Verse 2s, um, you know, the Riri Williams Iron Invincible Iron Man books. They're just, you know, there are all these people that have just stockpiled this stuff. Um, I mean, hell, even myself, I've got two copies of Ultimate Fallout that I've never sent in. One of them I just took out of the bag uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, and those are easily 9-8 candidates. Um, so they're out there. The thing is, to your point leading into this, it's the demand. I mean, when people decide they want something, they want it right now. And you can also, when you control the supply, 
So everybody's hoarding all these books, right? They're stockpiling them. When you control the supply, you can, can artificially inflate the price by withholding it, right? When Especially when you hit the high demand points. So I have zeroed out in my mind when we get the next Edge of Spider-Verse trailer, you're going to see a trickle of Ultimate Fallout 4 is coming out, right? So that's going to be that constricted supply starting to filter out to take advantage of that increased price as demand has gone up because now Miles is, I mean, not that he's ever too far out of focus for most people, but now, you know, he's right back front and center. <laughs> I don't think Kyle's wrong at all. Yeah, right, uh, right. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and that's that's another thing is like is is the backlog. I mean, yeah, how many are mm -hmm. sitting there to when they finally catch up? You know, one day, you know, they update their census and there's like 500 a, added to the, to the yeah, census. Yeah, you know, it hops 12 to 20 percent or something like that. Right. So I think there's definitely some high likelihood that certain books are going to be diluted over time. It, it's just natural. Now, when you start getting into, I think, modern books, copper books, um, similar um, to a, a slightly lesser extent, you start getting into bronze and silver. For the most part, you're not going to see a, enough volume change on those, particularly in high grades, right. where it's going to move the needle much. So, it, depending on which end of the pool you're swimming in here, it's going to have a greater impact, I think. I, I, I hear you. Bronze Age. So, uh, yeah, and, and I, I like that um, Kyle brought up about, you know, uh, bat, backlog and, you know, we, we if, if CGC and CBCS, you know, the big two, you know, if, if people were getting their books back quicker, that could change both, you know, what's showing up on the census and it could kind of be, uh, changing how people submit or even how they demand, you know, the books on the market. So uh, Bronze Age, just uh, weigh in here. What, what do you think about, uh, you know, us really paying attention to census numbers and, you know, telling us these are these are scarce on the market. I need this now. Yeah, I think it's an interesting topic. I think the the thing that sticks out to me are a couple of factors. And, and I guess you could kind of break it up into short term and long term. And, and Drew touched on this a bit too. Um, when, when it comes to short term, it seems like, you know, especially over the last year and a half, two years, it, it's definitely seems to have cooled a little bit. But we have this kind of blood in the water mentality when, when something comes out. Like if we got news tomorrow, you know, since we're talking about Ultimate Fallout so much, if we got news tomorrow that Miles has been cast for the MCU, that book would inevitably jump. It would be you know, it doesn't matter for, for a short-term period how many copies are out there. Seemingly, it might actually matter in reality, but people will still hop on it. And then they'll hop on lower-grade versions of that, that same book, all those kinds of things. And it's really an interesting thing that happens. But it does make me wonder when you look at, like, you know, baseball card grading or sports card grading, I should say, has a little bit longer history. And when you look at, the you know, the census, how much it matters... Uh, going into the long-term speculation, it does make you wonder as we have all these copies that are going to be hitting the market at a future date. And, you know, let's say that casting announcement did happen for Miles. How many more people would then send their copies in in addition to the people right. that already have them waiting in the queue or already have them graded? And it makes me wonder, you know, if it depends on your strategy, I think is kind of how much you have to look at it. Are you in this for the MCU announcement? Wait for the trailer. I'm going to sell the book. Are you in this for hold for 40, 50 years thinking that Miles Morales is every bit the next Peter Parker in 60 years from now we'll be talking about him and really looking at those books in a serious way? I think that that all kind of matters and you have to kind of weigh those questions on yourself because I think that there is definitely something to be said for the enormous number of modern books, but we've seen it time and time again. All these books have huge print runs. New Mutants 98 has a massive print run that can still be worth big bucks because of that, that Deadpool appearance. So... I really have to wonder, you know, does it matter too much in this kind of short or midterm? And is it only going to matter in the long term? Right. Great, great points. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing to take out of, you know, what both you guys said is that the way, and I talk about this all the time, the way supply and demand works, people forget, people get so focused on print run. Like you were just saying, I think, um, uh, Deadpool's first appearance has like over 400,000. I don't think it's in the millions, but I think it's like somewhere around like half a million, if I can remember. Yeah. Um, but you it's know, high. yeah, it, yeah. It, it's 
yeah, it still commands that value. And that's because we have to remember that scarcity on the market means what's available on the market. Like Drew was saying, you know, there's people that stockpile this stuff and they're holding it. You know, there could be a half a million books printed, but if there's only a thousand of them on the market at any given time and 2000 people want that book, they're going to, they're going to battle to get that book in terms of how they claw at that demand and it's going to raise that value. So again, supply and demand equates to the supply available on the market at any given time. And when people do, when we become so reactionary to speculative, you know, factors like a trailer, a casting and so forth, and we want that book now, that scarcity in that moment is very real because we're bottlenecking. It's like, it's just like, you know, remember the uh, the chicken sandwich from Popeye's? I, I don't know if you guys remember when that was launched and people, somebody got shot and killed. I'm, that's saying the laughing matter. Somebody literally got shot and killed over it because they were fighting over like the last one at a local Popeye's. It's crazy. But it's not like chicken is in scarce supply. It's not like the batter. It's not like Popeye's is going anywhere. They're short on employees or there's they're not shipping more frozen chicken in or buns in no but you know just the demand got so high that people were rushing into it and they were out of the supply at the store before they put their next order in and so forth so that's like just a different example of how what they want isn't there in that moment and whatever's on the market is going to dictate what that value is going to do as it equates to the demand so Great points from both of you. Now, uh, in Bronze Age, we'll start with you on this one. We we used a a key comic uh, to to talk about this. I want to kind of switch gears and talk about not so key comics. Uh, and and I I talked about this recently as well too. So when we have a book that is scarce in numbers on the census, okay. So again, UF four three thousand nine point eight. In the grand scheme of things, especially of a 70 plus thousand print run, that's a pretty small number considering the high demand for that book. But let's take a book that maybe, you know, maybe it's a modern book. Maybe it's uh, it has some spec possibility to it. Maybe it's a second print of a first appearance from the 90s. Maybe it's an origin story of a character that's already shown up a few times and you know, maybe it, it, it can demand 5 to $10 on the market, and then we get a little spec talking, and maybe that price dries up a little more. And then you go and look at the census, and there's 29.8s. There's 29.8s. Maybe they were selling for 80 90 bucks, And then one of us, one of us, you know, we, we're, we're collectors on a budget. Maybe I can't speak for all you guys. I'm sorry. I'm just speaking for myself, <laughs> but as a collector, as somebody who makes YouTube videos that cares about collectors on a budget, um, you know, maybe I'm talking about, you know, more affordable possible spec books that, that might be worth looking at. And I talk about this book and I say, look, you might be able to find this book for under $20 raw, low risk. You know, something could come out of it because of the MCU. And then because I have an audience, people are hopping onto eBay or what, you know, I was going to say or whatnot, but literally or whatnot. <laughs> the app, isn't it funny how we use that term now is because it's an actual app, but, you know, and, and they're like, well, if Journal talked about it, I, I, I'm getting my, I'm getting that FOMO. You know, if Como talked about it, if Bronze Age talked about it, I'm, I'm getting that FOMO. I got to go look, right? And, and then all of a sudden, this book in a 9.8 that was maybe, like I said, there's a couple out there selling for 80, 90 bucks. It sells for $500. $500 because some guy on YouTube in front of a screen said, this might be a decent $20 and under spec book. There's Ooh. nothing more terrifying to me as a content creator than when I talk about a book and two weeks later I open Key Collector and there's that green arrow next to it. Uh, like, oh God, please tell me that wasn't me. Oh man, yeah. So, so okay. So basically, 
my point is this this is this is different you both talked about and drew you talked about how you you know if it's something like miles in a first appearance we're gonna that scarcity on the market is gonna be for what's available right now i want it right now but when you look at something like this and they say oh man there's only 29.8s on the census bronze age i i, yeah. I gotta ask you what 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 comes to mind and 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 how what what are you what are you thinking when you see something like this going on? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um primarily I'm thinking there's gotta be better lottery tickets out there, is is <laughs> the first thing I think of. Um and, and better better uses for money. Uh, but you know, it's easy to say that, but then if that does pay off for that person and uh let's say that that rumor that that influencer talked about does come to pass. And then all of a sudden that $500 book is a thousand fifteen hundred dollars book and everyone else is racing to get theirs submitted to different grading services. It, there is a very real possibility it could pay off. But, but generally when I see something like that, I, I really cringe. Um, it's, it's different if, if it's a book you love and it's for your personal collection, well, I guess my advice would still kind of be the same because I'd say, hey, wait and, and right. see how it all shakes out. Maybe you can get that book later on or just go find a raw like you were talking about and do your own submission. But when you see those those crazy prices on those low pop, you know, sort of uh, 9.8s or whatever, I just I just every single time I can't I can't I can't understand like thought process behind, behind somebody that wants to pull the trigger on that in, in, unless they're just, you know. Scrooge McDuck diving through the the pile of gold coins or something like that. It's a little right. different story for those types of people, you know that that stuff. It's it's like probably like day trading to them, uh, but the people that are are buying that thinking that's going to pay off, it's a surefire thing. That's what I think about when I when I hear something like that and when I see that happening in the hobby, is what kind of impacts that can have on somebody because for some of those people that are buying that, they have kind of that addiction to the FOMO that I was talking about a little bit at the front of the show. And that's a lot of diapers or that's a lot of, you know, milk and bread for their family or something like that. And that's kind of where I come at those things. Um, I, you know, I'm always a strike while the market's cold kind of a thing, you know, look for those types of books. And so I hope that they're kind of, you know, maybe more doing that. But uh, when one of us talks about something like that and people do kind of, you know, put the searchlight, the eye of Sauron goes on that book. It definitely can drive that stuff. And, and I just really urge caution for people with their dollars when it comes to that kind of stuff, personally. Well, well let me ask you, before we let uh, Drew chime in here, I want to ask you this too specifically. Do you feel that in these unique situations, do you think what do you think the census is playing a part? It does, and it doesn't ex to an extent. It really is going to depend on the book. And I'm trying to give a great example, top of my head, but it's just kind of hard to do. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example because sure. this is a, a real, real situation. And look, I'm not. I just want to make this clear too. This was. I'm going to give an example of. There was a couple people that talked about it on YouTube, and I am in no way speaking negative of these YouTubers. Like they were simply just saying, you know, this this could be a cheat. Yeah, they weren't telling you to go buy the book or spend $500 on a graded copy. They weren't. So I want to make that clear. But there was a book that recently did this, and I it's a perfect example. And it was Uncanny 282, the second appearance, uh, excuse me, the, the second print, second print gold cover. So there's your there's your example. And there was like, yeah, there was only like 22 9.8s on the census. Right. And, and that to me is, you know... <laughs> So I make a, if you guys aren't familiar with me on YouTube, I make a, a series of videos called Top 5 Not to Buy. And the whole root of that is looking at a thing like, you know, for example, um, you know, CBSI Hot 10 or Key Collector Training 20 or whatever, and picking out books that I think are just the worst possible investment out of those books. I'm not saying they all are bad investments. Some of those are great investments. Some of those really pay off for people. But I look at those ones. Uncanny 282 Second Printing is one that definitely ended up on my list. And the reason why is because it is that, you know, the low pop, people are going to go run out for it. But also a ton of people are now submitting that book to CGC or CBCS or whatever grading service you want to use. And, well, you know, primarily it's probably going to be CGC. And once that happens, you know, what's Bishop going to do? Is he going to appear in the MCU by the time that people get those books back? Almost certainly not. I mean, there's a 0.01% chance that that's going to happen. Right. Um, and if that does happen fantastic payday for those people if it doesn't happen 
you know, what are you, what are you going after? Like, that's just so bizarre to me. And that doesn't even get into the the whole thing about first versus second print there, which is a whole different part of that, that scenario. There's a ton of that book out there. And so it kind of makes sense, you know, Hey, maybe second print's a little bit more rare um, and less submitted. So the population's lower, but that's a temporary thing. That is the, if you had that book and you were one of those 20 people that for whatever reason <laughs> submitted that book, congratulations. Yeah, you just got paid. Right, right. Okay, uh, so so Drew, uh, kind of playing off of what Bronze Age just said too, mm -hmm. um, I'll bring up kind of another example because he okay. made a good point about like by the time, again, we're talking about by the time, first off, if, if a YouTuber talks about something and everyone's rushing to get it, then you know, not only are people rushing to buy it, but you know that anybody that's selling or flipping comics is rushing to get them out to CGC. Oh, mm -hmm. shoot. The second appearance of this 90s, this mass-produced 90s book is is getting hot in a 9.8 selling for 500 shoot i got like eight copies of those i'm sending them all to cgc mm -hmm. so again and then knowing how cgc's turnaround is slow i mean say if it say if it was another book and of course you know somebody like bishop could show up in the mcu but say it was some somebody maybe more more uh you know all the x-men it's just like it's kind of, there's it's fog there we don't know much of anything going on but we'll look at carnage carnage is an example there's a second print the silver Second yeah, yeah. print of 361. Well, there was well, a we're, well, we're, well, specific to the the low, <laughs> um, again, the the very low census count, mm -hmm. and then yeah, and then sending those in, be like before the spec happens, because I mean it can essentially the spec could be gone by the time they even get those books back. Exactly, and I, I think to quote the Matt Damon commercial, which I know it's actually from something else. Uh, fortune favors the bold, right? So, if you're ahead of the market and you're forward thinking, you're like, "I've got this book; it looks great. I'm going to sla uh, slab it and get it back. You know, submit it." It comes back a nine eight. The spec hits, and you know you're that much further ahead than everybody else. To throw another cliche out there, the early bird gets the worm. So you've gone out there, you've submitted the book, everybody else is looking at you like you've got two heads because you wasted good money and good time to submit this thing. And now all of a sudden, you're standing here, you know, holding, not holding the bag, but I mean, you're, you're in peak position. You have what everybody all of a sudden wants. Nine times out of 10, you're going to be standing there holding stuff people still don't want, but every once in a while, it does hit. And, and I think that's just, it's a, a different type of risk, really, at that point. Because another advantage these people have, they're submitting things that are are not particularly valuable when they do send them in. So they can do bulk submissions and, and get it out for cheap. And if you use FastPass, you know, you can shave a little time. But I think it's a gamble in the, in the long run for the most part. I don't think it pays off most of the time, but... When you hit, you hit, right? Absolutely. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you to AOA again for for the super chat. He's like, talk these talk these books up. Bye bye, DW Retail Incentives. Let's talk about them. <laughs> Where's my can of spinach? I I hope you already have them at CGC, and I hope they've been there for six months. Because if if you haven't yet, and we're talking about them today, by the time you get them back, it's it's gonna you, you miss the train. I like what Swaggle mm -hmm. just said here. He said. Um, the people who had the foresight to great white vision before WandaVision made a killing. And this is, I think, imperative to part of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You have the foresight, you send them in, and if you have these books in a 9.8 or even, you know, lower grades, whatever. Um, but the 9.8 went crazy. Obviously, I think it hit past 1,500. Mm -hmm. You know, th then you had them ready. When that hit, you were able to make, make that money and that profit at, at the peak. But if you waited till midnight and you're like, oh, shoot, there's White Vision. I have 20 copies of those. And you went and grabbed them out and said, I'm about to go send them all out to CGC. Okay, look, you, you, you know, 16 of them came back 9.8s. But now the book has dropped like 65% in value. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think um, for me as collectors, the, the, the point I want to knock home here is – the census matters. And I think, you know, Drew, Bronze Age, you both made good points to why, especially for books that are solidified. 
and especially for older books to where the shifting of the census, especially in high grade, isn't going to do too much craziness, right? Outside of that, if you're looking at books that have very low census counts, don't just look at it as being something that's scarce or rare. Look at it as possibly being something that nobody gave a damn to send into CGC in the first place. And that's why there's not that many out there. Mm -hmm. So you got to really take heed, look at each situation individually, respective to their own, to their situations, to the individual book. And you just, you really got to be smart. And at the end of the day, I think you both use some key words, you know, uh, uh, the risks, the, the gambles, that's, that's what it is often, especially if you miss the boat and these things are already peaking in price. And at the end of the day, end of the day, you got to ask yourself, there's, there's two things. Either you're here for the risk, you know, and you're willing to take that risk, or you really are just here because you love that character. So you might just want to wait it out and see if some of these books drop. But uh, man, good, good stuff, guys. So uh, hey, one more, one more point about yeah. that though that I yes, want to make yes, real go ahead. fast. So uh, and I, and it's kind of to acknowledge a point that you know Ultra Maximus is in here. He's talking about 282 and kind of going back to that point and kind of touches on what Swagglehouse said too. If you are in this because you think. Um, you're out this and this to make some money, which I don't have any problem with. As a, I think that's a perfectly valid way to collect comic books. If you're willing to call your shot, if you if you are looking at the future, you know, I I'll say MCU because almost all speculation these days is based off of the MCU. It just is, uh, not all of it, but most of it. If you really want to say like, hey, I have this huge belief in Bishop, or I have this huge belief in Cardiac, or you know, if you have some obscure hero or villain that you're like, I can just see it happening. I can see how this is going to play out. I can see how they're going to introduce this character. And I don't think anybody else is looking there. Go for it. Find, you know, you know, like with 282, you'd find the second print or whatever. Be, be the person who has that graded and can beat the curve. My only advice then would be just don't go overboard on that. Really call your shot. Pick your book or two or, or whatever your budget is. And then... Yeah, feel free to do that because that that to me, there's been times where I've kicked myself and this has happened. I've been like, man, I knew that was going to happen and I didn't act on it. And if you have that kind of gut feeling, don't have that kind of regret if that's really what you're in this for. That'd be my advice. Dude, I tell you, um, I got a Facebook group, kind of local friends and, you know, just people around the area. I ran across the Gleason variant back before it was a thing. That Spider-Man 55, it blew up, right? How many printings? Right. <laughs> Before it became a thing, you could go to his website. You could order 9.8 trade dress copies for 100 bucks. You can get signed ones for 125. You get virgins, all this. I literally sent the link to this book to my Facebook group and said, hey, guys, I think this is going to be huge. <coughs> I didn't order any of them. Guys in the group who ordered the book were doubling their money based off advice I gave and didn't act on. So it's just you know, I didn't want to put the money in it. So having the intestinal fortitude to do that is a, a big yeah, thing, right. but I, I wanted to one back I'm thing back. Around, or one thing back around on that Avenger West coast adventures 45. Mm -hmm. If you submitted your books, when that book drops right now, you could have sold those books raw for more than what they're going for in anything under a nine eight. So if you submitted and got a nine two, a nine four, a nine six, that book was what 150, 175 bucks raw at the peak. Yep. Yep. 90 day average on a nine two is 109, 10 or nine four is 121, and a nine right. six is 186 with a last sale of 145. Wow. That is great. So for perspective. Data. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yep. Crazy. Thank you for sharing that. That 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 just that sums it up right there, man. Uh, I want to say too, what's funny is I just had, you know, I I, I purchase off of my comicshop.com and I'll put things on my want list and you'll mm -hmm. get an email yep. saying, oh, you know, we got this book in. And it was oh, what what book is it? It's Thunderbolts one something. It's like it's where like um Black Widow is posing as Yelena, but it's, it's, it's like where she, I, I forget, but it's like, you know, semi little, little key spec on it. And it was like six bucks 
And I'm like, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not paying six bucks right now. And I thought mm-hmm. to myself right now, well, Hey, I mean th- that could, and, and I'm like, I'm good. I'm, if it's worth $50 a month for now. So I- I'm bringing this up just to show all you guys, like, you know, it, as collectors, don't always get caught up on the the risk of the investment side. It, it, like I said, unless you're here for that, unless you're a gambling man or gambling woman, and that's what you're here for. Me, I love to focus on the investment side of comic books. But I'll tell you, if I drown myself in the investment side of comic books, I'm, I'm not going to love what I'm doing. So for, for me right there, I can live with myself saying, I'll pass because I don't really care about Thunderbolts at all. I don't, I don't, I, I have no, nothing here in the heart for that. So if it ends up being worth money and I missed out, I might say, God darn it, Chris, you know, you, you missed out, but mm-hmm. I'll, I'll have a little chuckle and, and move on. So 